Hello everybody out there, uh, my name's Mark Goddard, you're listening to the Breakthrough Assault YouTube channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint these new plastic battlefront uh, BMD transports for your uh, Soviet airborne forces and as you can see here, it is some I've prepared earlier if you're British you might remember uh, it's in typical Blue Peter fashion a um, few examples, BMP2 BMP1 at the back, great thing about this kit, you get both turrets and it's a common um, chassis, so you can actually make both, um, so you can swap them out depending on, on what you need for a particular game. And here's the objective model that comes in the starter set, um, and you know, I've done, I, I've chosen to do mine up in a particular brand, but um, the reason I put that on there is so you can see that this can be applied to the objective as well, and it's just the same technique. So today I'm going to be taking you through how to paint up a um, BMD 1 and 2. Uh, I've started with a primed model. I've got my two turrets here. And what I want to do, I don't want this to be a massive long video. Um, there's some fantastic painting videos out there, but I don't know about everybody else, but I don't have time to sit for half an hour watching someone paint a tank. I just want to know the techniques, I want to know the colours, and I want to know any gotchas so that I can go about doing it. So I'm going to try and go through these very quickly. I'm not going to leave the video on um, showing me painting in all the green on a model, for example, or speeding it up. You all know how to paint. Um, what you want to see is techniques, colours, gotchas. So here I've just started with uh, a ivory, um, that's kind of off-white uh, buff undercoat. There's loads of company you can get sprays from. This is just a, a skeleton bone uh, undercoat uh, and it's all going to get painted over anyway, uh, but it just gives me that nice light underbase. Um, and, and to create my tones on top of. So without further to do, we'll start with the uh, the first paint. Okay, my first paint is a Dark Sand by Vallejo. Uh, I'm just using a really old makeup brush, nothing fancy, nothing special. This is just to get the paint onto the model, um, just off to the side, because it's, it's a bit, I have a very mucky paint palette, so you can't see it. I'm just getting some paint out, and all I'm doing is I'm getting this on here, and I'm just going over the whole model, just picking out, um, you know, a layer of paint and just getting that all on the top. Nothing fancy, nothing exact. It's just going to cover the whole model. And these these uh, makeup brushes are just really good for getting into every nook and cranny and getting that whole model done. Don't worry. Actually, I've just done it, but don't worry about the tracks um, and, and inside the tracks because that's all going to be green. So paint the whole model, paint your turrets. All in this dark sand, step one done. So this is the model now covered in dark sand. As you can see, it's just changed the tone ever so slightly and we're ready to go with the next step. And that is starting to apply the green camouflage like you can see on here. Now that will happen in a couple of stages, but the base color for that is reflective green by Vallejo. And again, I've just put that onto my palette. I've made sure my brush is a bit wet um, just to it's a bit of a balance. I don't want to water it down too much because uh, it'll go everywhere, but I don't want it too thick that it gets a bit blotchy when it goes on. So just a little bit of practice with that. Um, I use the picture on Battlefront's uh, website to get my camouflage pattern, and I've kind of got used to that now. Um, so I'm just putting this on here. It's really hard to actually hold this and do it at the same time. And I'm trying to just put it on and get these hard edges as it goes in. And I'm, as I'm doing it, I'm looking at a previous model I've painted. And what I'll do is I'll do the edges of it and then go back in and block it out. Don't worry if some of, you, some of your edges are a little bit rough because you're still at the going to put the uh, grey on and that's going to go over the edges of the, the green. Okay. But try, you know, this is where you need to start being neat. Start getting that on. Now, in some places, if you made it a bit too watery, you might want to come back and do a second coat. Better to do two coats than do one that's overly thick. I do find this particular paint looks a bit smeary when it goes on. It's better when it dries. Um, 
but if I'm not happy with it, I'll either come back and do a second coat or it'll be picked up when we do the layering later on in the video. So I'm now gonna go around the rest of the tank. I'm just gonna brush this on. You can use whatever pattern you want from the website um, or whatever takes your fancy of where you're gonna put that green. But I would suggest you're looking for about one third of the model covered in it. And you wanna make sure you um, get that green. Don't forget your turrets at the same time as well. Finally, as you can see, although this has been weathered, inside all of the tracks area um, is green as well so i'm going to block in everything in here with a big brush don't worry about hitting the track with it as long as you're not getting onto the side of the vehicle just you know get a big brush in there make the whole of that innard green okay and then we'll come back later on we'll do the wheels we'll do the tracks we'll tidy it all up so see you in a sec right well that's the uh green applied reflective green as you can see i've got it all into the tracks in there around the other side and then just applied my camouflage on the top say so doesn't need to be perfect at this stage we're going to use something called a filter after this um, and then we're going to be providing some some layers and highlights on top of it that will catch any any little tiny bits that have been missed I should point out, um, sorry, I forgot to say this at the front, you know, everyone's got their different style and what they're going for with their painting. Um, I'm aiming to produce, you know, as you can see by here, a high tabletop standard model that you're going to put on the table. Um, you're going to get some great comments. What a lovely looking army and you're going to be proud of. I'm not trying to create individual masterpieces that you're going to take to a big um, you know, a big event and get first prize in the painting contest. I'm trying to balance speed of getting through your, your pile of shame um, with a, a, a really good tabletop finish. OK, uh, so next we're going to be coming on to um, German Grey and we're going to be applying that into our, um, our camouflage pattern. And again, I'm just going by the pictures. You can use Battlefront's pictures, you can use, um, you know, I looked at some real world ones, although they tend to be a bit more modern. Um, the key thing with the grey, when you look at the pictures, is it doesn't create blocks on its own. It goes down the side and overlaps with the green, like this. So I'm just picking out different areas and just applying that hard edge camouflage along the edges to create, you know, you can see it on there, those darker areas and that pattern on there. OK, so again, go through the model, go through uh, your turret. Key thing on the turret to remember is uh, the barrels are also um, grey. So I hit the whole barrel up with that as well. OK. OK, so we're starting to uh, really look like uh, a good paint scheme here now. We've got the base colours uh, of the camouflage, three-tone camouflage on. Uh, turret is done. Uh, tracks uh, have been filled in. Uh, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to use a filter. And a filter is... Uh, I think of it as a more subtle wash. It's going, it's it's incredibly, um, I don't want to use the word subtle again. Um, it's incredibly watered down. Um, it doesn't pull like a wash, but it's going to get into those crevices. And it just is perfect for tying camouflage together and just applying a more realistic tone to the model. And then from that, we can weather up on top of it. Now, I find that MIG do the best camouflages, uh, camouflages, sorry, uh, filters. They traditionally were oil-based and um, uh, smelly, uh, could be a bit hard to use and they could affect your paint as well. But they've now released um, acrylic versions and I'm using tan because of the, the main part of the colour is that kind of buff, uh, dark sand. Uh, I'm going to use it neat out of the bottle. I'm just going to put it onto uh, my palette I'm going to get a, a good old brush and I'm just going to dab it on. Uh, I'm going to put it over the entire model and then I'm going to leave it. And this is important. Make sure it's thoroughly dry. It will take um, it will take at least an hour. Um, 
once done, we'll come back and the next step after that will be um, putting in the tracks, uh, getting into those road wheels on there um, and then start layering up uh, and creating some better definition uh, and highlights on the camouflage. OK, so um, I'll just show you what this looks like um, when it goes on. Uh, so as I say, I'm just literally dabbing it onto my palette, um, taking it on here um, and I'm just sticking it straight on. And as I say, don't you know, I don't want any massive pulls. You know, I'm not going to go crazy with it, but I'm not too worried because I'm going to put some lovely layers over the top as well. So um, unlike a wash, you, you really can just whack this on and not worry too much about where it's falling. Um, and hopefully it's hard. It is subtle and it's hard until it dries, but you can see a, a slight kind of tan definition and it's getting in around those raised areas. It's getting into the crevices and it's starting to bring that detail out. So I'm going to go ahead now, put it over the whole model and then, um, then we'll be back. OK, so my um, filter is now dry and uh, we're now going to lighten the model back up a bit. Um, I put a bit more light on because yeah, it was getting a bit dark in here. Um, <sighs> filters are hard to show up on videos and, and it is one of the problems I find with whether I've done photos for the website or whether you're doing a video, things look, do look different in real life. It's a bit shinier on the video um, and it's probably a bit lighter in the videos. You're probably wondering why I'm lighting it up a bit. In reality, it's just a, a little bit darker. So what we're going to do um, is we are going to use Buff. It's a fantastic paint. Um, not only am I going to use Buff to um, layer onto the uh, dark sand area of the camouflage, um, but I'm also going to mix it. Probably, um, you know, if I had to give a ballpark, it might be as little as um 30 percent into my green and um a gray in order to lo just lighten that color up and then layer on the top so just getting a little bit on the brush not too much um and what i'm going to do i'm looking for you know these raised areas here and uh i'm just painting them in really uh and what i'm aiming to do if i can is just to keep paint away from can you see on the edge of here you you can see the tan from the um from the filter so i'm trying to keep it away from that um and i'm just layering onto these areas nice those nice little flat bits and just lightening the model up and we you need to remember when you're painting at particularly when you're painting at 15 millimeter is things if anything you want things a bit lighter um i've forgotten what the the correct phrase is or, or the correct terminology but basically um when you're looking at something that's small it's very easy it's very hard for the light to catch on it and um, compared to using let's say one of your big scale models uh, so you get by that by perhaps over emphasizing how light things are so what i'm doing and this really is personal preference um I, i'm going through, lightening this up, and you know, you need to experiment yourself a bit. You could add a little bit more, um, you could add a little bit more white into there as well. Um, and when I come back in a second, I, I, I would have gone over this with buff, and then I'll do the extreme points such as the top of here, um, the, you know, the top of these panels. Um, I'll add a bit of white in, you know, again, probably about 30% white into the buff, because um, I like um, a lighter model uh, and I like it to be lighter because when we start doing the um, the weathering, it's going to take that back down. So personal preference, use what you wish. And here we have the lit up or uh, so say lightened up uh, kind of sandy colour on the BMD. Um, went over with buff and as I say, just put a little bit of white in for a final bit as well. Still very shiny on the video. It's not like that in real person. The next step, I'm not going to show you it all happening, is I'm going to do the same with the green and the grey, um, lightened up with a bit of buff um, just to provide those layers and highlights. And also at the same time, I'm going to catch the road wheels with um, German, straight German grey on each side. Okay. 
That's our um, highlighting on the base colours done. Uh, hopefully you can see clearly in there that um, it's a lot lighter. I would suggest it looks a bit lighter on the video than it does in real per in real life, but it's going to stand out nicely. The next stage is we're going to hit the tracks up, and as um, I claim, copied on many other videos because I've been using it for ages. But I think we all discovered it at the same time. Um, the, a, a bit of a life painting hack for tracks, and that is uh, Citadel color um, Gore Grunter fur. Um, is just going to get whacked straight onto the tracks and um, anything that's still left up on that tan colour around the tracks will be hit with that um, and, and left to dry and that's going to give a, a really nice effect. Um, so you know the one I made earlier, you look at the front here, um, by the time we've got a bit of dust on, which we'll do at the end, it's giving you a really nice um, muddy used track look um, just from one layer of paint and because it's literally you know, as thin as water almost, um, it's so easy to go on uh, because I absolutely despise painting, painting tracks. Uh, top tip, I can't do it with this model because it's actually built in, but if you get the opportunity, paint your tracks separately and then glue them on afterwards uh, and it's so much easier to get around them, particularly with a contrast paint. Um, but in this case, I had to leave them on, so I'll hit the paint up on there now. That's the tracks painted. As you can see, while well, they're still drying, you know, they, they come out really well. Um, they go on really easily and um, we'll be applying some dust weathering to that later on uh, to get into all those nooks and crannies. Uh, next up, I'm going to do a few things at once uh, just because they're very, very simple. Um, next up, as you can see on this guy here, I'm just going to apply a decal of a number on the side. Um, I, all my um, BMDs have just got a numbered series starting at 100. Uh, I'm only putting them on one side. Uh, you only actually get one of each number in the set, so I'm assuming it only goes on one side. Uh, I did ask Lee as my resident um, break for assault uh, knowledge base, shall I say, on, 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 on all things equipment. Um, and, and he laughed and came back and said, they're Soviets, um, you know, do, do as you wish, because it was a bit of a free for all. So I'm just going to put um, one on the left hand side. Um, then I'm going to pick out um, the little bar down there um, with uh, bolt gun metal. And finally, I'll switch to this one so you can see it. Uh, I'm going to pick out any, any glass. So all the vision sights um, with, uh, I don't even know the name, the colour of the blue. The initial one I'm going to use is just a base. So whatever, you know, it, it start with a dark blue and put it on and then I'll go through how, how we lighten it up a little bit. Um, so just whichever blue you've got to hand onto the glass um, and all the vision slits and then pick out any tools, etc. Um, on either side. You've got those little bars down the front uh, with bolt gun metal. I'll see you back in a moment. Decal applied. Now, if you were going to be absolutely pure with this, you would put... Um, uh, a gloss varnish down in the area first. It makes a really smooth surface to go on. Um, the model's fairly shiny uh, and that's from the um, filter that went on. And I I find that after the filter's gone on, I can apply a, a decal and not get that horrible um, glossy effect when it dries. I know it looks a bit on there at the minute, but that's that's because it's wet. But when I, you know, you can see on this one, um, it's, it's gone on really nicely. So if you want to put the varnish on, um, yeah, gloss varnish and put your decal over it. We're going to matte varnish this anyway later on. Um, sorry, on the previous clip, I did say the phrase bolt gun metal for the paint. Um, that's me showing a bit of age with Citadel colours. It is the um, Citadel metallic uh, lead belcher uh, just to pick out metal parts. And if you are interested, the blue I've used for the vision slits is, well, there we go, Aliyat. Ali, 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 don't know, Ali, Atok, Ali, Atok blue. Let's go with that. Um, no idea, must mean something in Warhammer Fantasy World, but it's a nice blue, so we'll go with that. Um, if I turn the model towards you, you you should be able to see um little blue facing out at you on the vision slits, 
uh, and on the headlights. All I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to lighten that blue up with some white uh, and I'm going to put a dot in uh, the bottom half, um, let that dry and then with a really steady hand, a little brush, I'm just going to tie, apply a tiny bit of white right at the bottom of each one of those um, those areas, particularly the headlights, a bit hard to do on the vision slits because they're so small and that will, um, that will be your lights done. Um, after that, we're going to move on to weathering and, um, uh, 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 and matte varnish. Okay, cheers. So I've lightened up the, uh, you can probably see them a lot more, a lot clearer now, those vision slits on there. Um, tracks are dry, uh, decals just, just finishing off, but we'll start the weathering process. Um, and for that, again, uh, I'm going to use a technique you've probably seen in a lot of places, which is just getting a little bit of... Um, I was trying to get that in focus there. Um, a little bit of sponge. I get mine straight out of the, the Battlefront blisters, ripping it off. I've dabbed it into um, German grey and then I just dab it onto my palette until pretty much all the paint's taken off. And that's important. You don't want too much. Top tip for this, uh, less is more um, because you, you can apply this sparingly and I'll show you how to do that because it is a bit tricky. Um, but you can always come back and add more. But if you put too much on, yeah, you could always repaint it, but um, it's, it's quite a faff to do. So all we're doing is we're looking particularly at these edges here and we're just going to knock our sponge into it just over the model. And we're just creating chipping just where little pings, stones, bullets, what, whatever. Uh, and it's looking at areas of it get up to so i'm getting it on the sides where people would get in and out the vehicle up the, the back of it where you're going to get those stones knocked up and particularly along the front of the chassis here so if you do it it'll get it all sorry i've just realized i just moved this off to the right um terrible of me um you can probably see on there it started to go on and i'm just putting it onto that edge there and onto that back in there okay i do turrets separately because they move around don't need quite as much on the turrets um but you sort of get on the front of the, the launch tubes the headlights on there and you can you know it doesn't have, it will show up better over the the tan but you can you can put it over all of it um, and of course over here as well i've got this BMP one, so you can put it on there. Just a little bit into that. Right, that's all it is. Okay, uh, while I pause this, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply a matte varnish. That's just a um, army painter matte varnish over the entire model, both turrets, uh, and leave that to dry. Uh, in the meantime, one thing, I'm also going to do on here is I'm just going to paint in uh, the missile on the top of the turret and that's just a uh, Vallejo green grey and um, when I've looked at the pictures the actual um, warhead um, charge on the on the front of the missile um, in a white uh, and once dry I'm just going to apply a, a really quick uh, black wash uh, non oil over it so a very small part of the model so I'm not going to take you through that but that will just create the effect I want. Okay, well that's the varnish now dry. Um, we'll stick a little turret on here. Oh no, I've just put my BMT2 turret down. Now I don't know where my BMT2 turret is. Oh, I'll tell you what, we'll use a BMP1 turret because it's the same principle. See, 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 live as it happens and the trials and tribulations we face. So there we go. So you could absolutely stop right there. Um, I think that's a nice looking tabletop BMD that's going to do you proud wherever you go. But I'm going to do one more step. And that is to use pigments, uh, MIG pigments, and this is European dust. Now, pigments traditionally, um, you put them on, you have fixing agent on there. And I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to put it on neat. And 
I wouldn't be too concerned with that. The idea here is to get into the grooves, get into the tracks and um, provide that, that, that hint of colour. And, and you can see it, if I compare the two here, um, if I move them next to each other there, you can get that idea. Now, at first, a tiny bit will come off on your fingers. And I do mean a tiny bit. However, once it's settled where it wants to settle, you're not going to lose that, unless you're going to stand out in the pouring rain with it. If you really want to fix it, go ahead. But again, I like to keep things simple. So all I'm doing with this is I'm getting a bit on a, a, a nice, clean, dry makeup brush, brush, and I'm just going to brush it into the wheels. And I want a fair bit in the wheels to get in, fall into here, like so. This is something I will show you because it's a bit different. You know, can you see how that's already, you know, it's subtle. It is subtle. Ooh, just perhaps just had a bit in there and do the other side. You know, I don't want, again, better to do less. Come back, put more on if you want. But can you see how it really complements the colour on the tracks? That's the main thing. Now, it's just thinking where it's going to build up. It's going to build up a lot on the back. So sticking it up in there, getting it onto the deck. You know, I can imagine it getting into those grooves. Um, I can absolutely see it. You know, mud, dust, etc. getting up onto the side. So I'm just dabbing it on, brushing it down, just allowing it to settle in where it wants. Same on the other side. And this is nice because this is going to get to work on that decal. See how it's all, you know, kind of blends it in. That's the word, blends it in. And of course, it's going to be quite a bit under that nice flat front. So I'll put it quite heavy on there. Not that we're really going to see it down there. And then just a bit lighter. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want it everywhere. Kind of on that, the front deck, sorry, I've done it again, uh, on that front deck on there. And just where people are getting out, I'm just doing a little bit on the sides of the turrets. Okay, and there we go. There's nothing more you need to do with that. Um, apart from, I'll have to take a look at that. <sighs> I give it a little bit of a blow, just to, if there's any loose bits, we'll, we'll, just to get rid of them. But there you go, you know, it's immediately muddied up, um, like that dust effect on your tracks. And it's just giving it that lived, lived look. You know, this thing's getting dropped, perhaps air dropped in. Um, it's actually, when I look at it through through the camera, um, it's perhaps not as noticeable on the camera. And I've noticed that when I've taken some pictures, you can obviously see it on the track. Um, but when you look at it in real life, um, you, you are seeing more of it on, on the front of the vehicle. You can just kind of see it there. But it's a little bit different in, 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 in reality. But I would recommend having a play with it, getting yourself used to it. It's a powerful and quick tool. So um, there you have it. That is, I'll take this one out. So um, there's my um, BMP2, uh, sorry, BMD2. Uh, and there's the one I've painted there with the BMP1 turret. Yep, I do just need to go over and do the white uh, on the uh, front of the missile. Um, I hope that's been useful for, for you. Um, oh, I don't know what's touched that track. It looks like a little bit of grey has just touched that track there. I'll, I'll sort that out. It's obviously been put somewhere. Um, I've now done four of these, so I've got five more to do. You get nine in the set, plus the anti-air. So I'll be getting those on the table. Um, and then uh, if I, yeah, once I get the time, I want to do a video as well on how to use contrast paints combined with Vallejo paints um, to paint your VDV infantry and that lovely uh, splinter camouflage on it. Um, and then um, we'll, we'll look at the military um, troops that I've got as well. Uh, but I hope that's useful for you. And, uh, you know, please leave some comments. It's, it's the first time I've done this. Apologies. I know at times it's just where the camera is set up on, on my limited space. I was kind of coming off at an angle, but I think I generally caught myself and I'll remember for the future. Um, thanks a lot for listening.